Badi. I am uh, Marco Consolaro. I connect from London. Unfortunately, because of this virus, I couldn't come there, but I already bought my hat. I hope to <laughs> use it next year. Uh, so let's uh, uh, talk about connaissance. Uh, I am uh, actually a, a technical author. We just released with Pedro Santos and Alessandro Di Gioia a book called Agile Technical Practices this year. Uh, we recently won an award from Book Authority as Best New Continuous Integration Book to Read on 2020. So uh, this uh, uh, chapter of uh, uh, connaissance is uh, a chapter of our book. Uh, it's a little bit of a taste of what it is uh, e going on in our coaching session. In effect, I am a technical coach and we already launched uh, a new company with my co-author Alessandro Di Gioia. It's called Alcor Academy. And this is uh, a little bit what happened in one of our uh, lessons. So let's uh, carry on. Uh, I really like this quote uh, uh, from Van Gogh because uh, I find Van Gogh's painting as a very good metaphor for connaissance. And uh, uh, the idea of connaissance is that uh, uh, it's uh, a new vocabulary, more complete than the one from coupling and cohesion, in order to talk about how the information flow in our code. And uh, it might seem banal, but uh, as we will see, there are many different ways as uh, the information flow in our system. And this uh, is something that uh, the concept of connaissance express really well. It's uh, really like when you look at a Van Gogh painting, if you have never seen it uh, in a museum, when you go really close to the painting, you really see the technique of the painter and uh, you can't really realize what is the main design of the painting. You see just a little bit of color altogether. But when you go back, then you see that these little colors are meant to give the main, the whole idea of the paintings. And connaissance works uh, in exactly the same way. So what does it mean? Connaissance is a word that comes from Latin. It means uh, co and nations. Co means together. And nations is from nascentem, which means uh, arising young. And is present participle, pr participle of nasi, which means to be born. So it means to the birth and growth of two or more things at the same time. Uh, so Two or more elements uh, are connaissant, and they can be anything, fields, method, classes, parameters, variables, are connaissant if a change in one element will require also a change in the other. So it's very similar to the concept of coupling, but it's way more wide. It uh, basically gives a taxonomy in three different dimensions. There is a dimension of degree that uh, shows the size of the impact of a piece of connaissance. There is the locality which uh, analyzes how close or far are the two uh, entities in the connaissance relationship. And then there is the strength that it is about uh, how likely it will require compensating change in connaissance elements uh, and how hard it will be to fix it. And the strongest, uh, uh, the stronger the kind of connaissance, the more difficult it will be to fix it. As far as the strongest uh, form of connaissance will require a uh, change in the design of the system. So they will be really difficult. So uh, in uh, uh, three, these three dimension, we actually have a clear direction of refactory because if we have a high degree we need to try to make it low if the locality is apart we need to try to make it closer if the uh, kind of connection is really strong we need to transform it in a weaker kind of connection it's almost always possible so 
I know what uh, what you are thinking. If you are developers, you want to see code, right? Okay, let's go. So uh, here we can see uh, a, a little piece of code, right? Uh, let's uh, analyze this code. Unfortunately, the uh, I meant to uh, show some transition in this slide, but we can analyze this code anyway, right? So what uh, what are the uh, pieces uh, here of conditions? If you follow the colors and you see there is an hour, a minute, a second, this class is a class called time. So it represents some time, right? And uh, here we can see that uh, if we look at the hour uh, variable, if we change the hour, and uh, let's suppose we uh, call it hour two on the top, in order for this code to work, we need to change that uh, everywhere in this piece, following the pink uh, uh, design. And the same is for minute, the same is for second on the parameters on the top, but the same is valid also for the three parameters in the constructor method, right? This is uh, the uh, uh, concept of connaissance of name. And uh, there is another interesting connaissance in this slide uh, this is the same piece of code but if we focus on the type we see that if we change the type of our parameters uh, let's say we uh, change the hours to be a float instead of an int we need to change it also on the type in our field on the top right and so on for minutes and so on for seconds this is the concept of connaissance of time and uh, uh, connections of name and time is basically the uh, good part of connections, right? Here is a slide with the uh, um, uh, classification, how weak or strong the kind of connections are. And we see that type and name are weak form of connections, are the good kind of connections, is basically uh, all we should uh, find all connections of this kind, right? Uh, and that's uh, uh, that's the good part. Uh, the problem is that it's not always like this, as we can see. So uh, let's see a different class, a class called Notificator, uh, that sends an email, right? And receive uh, uh, in the send email method three strings, right? The problem here is that if we see uh, the uh, last line of code here, it's the line of code of when we are going to call this method. And we see that we have the first string, which uh, is the recipient. The second string, it is the sender. And the third thing is the message. We can't really identify uh, what is the recipient or what is the sender in the moment we are writing the send email, we are consuming this method. We don't know really well what is what, because the first is one, the second is one. There is a relationship between the position in the method call. And this is connection of position. It happens when multiple components but must be adjacent or must appear in a particular order, often when passed with a positional structure like an array or a tuple. Right? How bad it is? It is quite bad. It is the strongest of the static kind of connaissance. And uh, it basically hides the meaning of a parameter behind its positional uh, order in some structure. And this is particularly bad because it doesn't express the meaning. Right? So, how can we fix it? Uh, well, we can fix it, transforming it into connections of name and time. So basically we can create uh, uh, three types, one to represent a recipient, one to represent the sender, and one to represent the message. And here we use our type system to give, to express a meaning for these three parameters. And so we don't rely anymore into the positional uh, place inside the method code. Uh, an alternative to do this, we might even do something better. If you want, we can create a notification class and then using a builder-like uh, 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 structure, we can add 
the to, from, and with message as a method of our notification. Uh, the two methods uh, are equivalent in terms of connections. The two solutions are equivalent in terms of connections because uh, we transform the connection of position in connections of name and type. Let's see how the degree might impact the uh, connections of position. Let's see if we have a, a order processor class with a, a process order and we have to uh, overload for this process order. One that accepts a tuple with two uh, parameters, right? And another with five parameters. So uh, if we see the uh, item uh, one and two in the first degree two, it's not very readable, but uh, we can even uh, still understand a little bit uh, what item one and item two are. Not very clear, but it is manageable. If we see uh, the uh, second example, where we have a uh, degree five, we clearly can't understand very much what item one, item two, item three, item four are. And at degree five, we already lost any form of expressivity. Uh, you see, when you try to call it, uh, you know, new tuple order through an ID, which is now Jack false, what the hell is that? It's basically impossible to understand what is going on there. And here we see that uh, a high degree is very, very detrimental for readability. So we should really not uh, have uh, methods with a lot of parameters. So let's see another kind of connections now. Uh, and let's see these, uh, uh, this class is the same class of before, right? It's the class that uh, represent time. And so we see that if we instantiate this class with these values like 27, 76, 82, that is not a valid time, right? And uh, uh, this is a, a classic example of connections of value, right? We introduce here an invalid state. It should not be possible to instantiate a time like that, right? So how bad is connections? So connections of value, it happens when two or more components values are related or have an intrinsic range of validity in their input, not expressed by their primitive types, right? Now we use integers there to represent hours, but hours as just a range of validity, not all the internet or not all the uh, integers are actually valid for, our, uh, for an hour. How bad it is? It's pretty bad. Is one of the, I guess, uh, form of connections. Uh, it is obviously discovered only around time because uh, actually when the system have an invalid state uh, inside, it, it can blow up somewhere in the time. It's very hard to predict. How can we fix it? Well, uh, as a bare minimum, uh, <coughs> this kind of connection, we need to validate the input as soon as possible. So. Once we uh, uh, do the constructor before anything else, we need to validate and let it participate only if it's a good class with a valid state. An alternative, better alternative to this solution is to actually use the type system to make the valid states unrepresentable. Here we can use an enumeration if you want. That's a a simple way to solve this and have an enumeration for hour, minute, a second. At this point, it's basically impossible to instantiate this class incorrectly. It always it is always valid because it's enforced by our type system. And also here we use connections of name and type to solve this problem. Let's see another uh, kind of connection. Sorry, double click. So uh, let's see this uh, uh, HTML code, right? It's, uh, I've seen it many times, right? And we have a checkbox where uh, we are uh, looking which uh, transport people have used to go to work, right? If it's uh, a bike, uh, we give uh, a value of one to the checkbox. If uh, they click car, we give a value of two. If they click train, we give a value of three. If we, they click bus, we give a value of four. 
right? And then somewhere in the controller, we will have a code, a similar code like that, where one is gonna be a bike, two a car, three a train, four bus, right? We basically here give, take an arbitrary value of one, two, three, four, and assign a meaning to that arbitrary value, right? One means bike, two car, three train, and so on. This is called connaissance of meaning or convention. And uh, it happens when two or more components must agree on the meaning of specific values, hence using a convention. It's uh, uh, not very strong, uh, but it's uh, very easy to uh, fix because uh, we can just introduce a constant and actually everything go back to connaissance of name and type. Let's see another kind of connaissance. And uh, uh, let's, uh, for example, see this little piece of code that do a, a checksum, right? We uh, check if uh, uh, this checksum is very stupid, right? It uh, check if the uh, sum of the number of, uh, uh, of the digits of a number is divisible by 10. And so here in this uh, particular example, we can see that we will have a method to add the checksum and we will have another method that uh, is used to check if the checksum is correct. And here, if we code it like that, we see that we basically use this algorithm in two different places without making really explicit. So if we have, a, if one day, for example, we want to say, well, let's do it uh, 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 not uh, a modus 10, but modus 100, for example, we need to change the code into different places in order for it to work. That's because we uh, use an algorithm without making it explicit. And uh, this is the connections of algorithm, when two or more components must agree on using a particular algorithm. And uh, also this one is uh, a between connections of meaning and connections of algorithm uh, as a static form of connections. And uh, it's uh, pretty easy to fix. Also here, we need to encapsulate the algorithm into its own method. And uh, if it's called from uh, anywhere in our system outside uh, this class, we can even encapsulate in its, in its own class. And uh, uh, actually doing like this, we uh, transform it in connections of name and type. And so we solve it. So let's see another type of connection. This type of connection is very interesting. It's, uh, 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 let's see uh, this code, right? Uh, we have a, a piece of code that send receipt, right? We have a receipt sender. We have a, a way to retrieve the ID and then we iterate through the uh, IDs and uh, uh, basically first we send uh, the receipt to the customer and then we archive it right clearly here we cannot invert these two lines if we archive it before to send it we are gonna have an error but there's nothing that uh, uh, tell the programmer that that is gonna happen right if we invert these two lines well this is called connections of execution order it's something that is happening a lot in our code right it happens everywhere because uh, it's uh, about coding right we need to do things in a certain order the problem here it is when it is not clear for the developer what is the correct order that we have to call the methods to a class and uh, uh, we can say that uh, connections of execution order happens when the caller of a component must have some unexpressed knowledge about the correct orders of the methods to be called, right? And this is something that is not uh, as easy as the other kind of connections to fix. So let's see. Uh, so uh, this one is uh, uh, quite strong is the uh, least strong of the dynamic form of connections, but uh, it is actually quite strong and it is uh, uh, addressable, right? So let's see the builder pattern, for example. If you are familiar 
with the build builder pattern you have actually a, a, a an interface divided in two right we, we have a, a set of methods to set up the builder as we want and then we have a method that usually is uh, uh, called build which uh, returns a concrete of some kind uh, based on the setup we did uh, in the previous method right it is conditions of execution order because we need to call the method to set up the builder before calling the builder uh, method and it is uh, expressed by convention right it's how the builder pattern is but uh, is it possible to make it explicit can we do that can we make it impossible to call the build before uh, call the method to set it up yes it is possible let's see this so we can segregate the interface for example right if uh, our builder builds car with brand and build cars with engine will build cars with color and then build the concrete we can chain the interfaces in the way that uh, uh, we uh, suggest to the user the uh, steps and the order of the steps we need to do in order to set up our builder and when we call it it's uh, actually uh, giving us uh, something interesting this is how the builder will become right will i narrate all these interfaces we can use a factory method to force the uh, first two instance of the builder to come out as an I build cars with brand and then gives uh, the uh, developer a very easy life uh, when it's time to use it uh, because uh, we can see that we can say new and there is a build cars with brand so it has only the with brand method and then that return a uh, I build car with engine which has only with engine method, which is which returns an I build card with color, which has only with color method, and then finally return an I build card that has only the build, which returns the concrete. We basically use interface to transform that uh, type of connections in connections of name and type, and actually remove completely connections of execution order. Yeah. Another similar type of connections, but uh, uh, the, this is not really related to the order of execution. It will, is related to a certain amount of time, right? That we need to wait before doing something. And uh, uh, it happens all the time. This is actually a code from uh, a product. This is production code I wrote uh, uh, a while ago. And obviously to test uh, that uh, a message bus has been sent, uh, uh, how can you do you need to wait some time in order to give the uh, time in the integration test to uh, flow the message in the queue right if you check it before it's received you can't find the test fail so you need to wait some time but it doesn't feel right right when you have something like this okay it's like mm, it doesn't feel like because you know sleep 1000 milliseconds it's like why 1000 it, it shouldn't be it feels bad but there's not a name right there's not a name to uh, tell why it's bad it just feels bad well now uh, there is a name for that it's connections of time so that's uh, a very good way to uh, express why this is not good and uh, usually it's not even easy to uh, solve it uh, so connections of timing happen when the success of two or more calls sorry uh, when two or more calls depends on the timing of when they occur and uh, it's uh, a very very heavy form of connections just before connections of, of value on the top and uh, it's uh, not very easy to fix right here what i uh, have done is uh, uh, basically raise an event on the message handler when the a message uh, when he receive a message that uh, allows us to do not have to wait uh, for the time to pass to check the uh, happy path because we can listen to the event and react to the event without wasting precious time 
uh, to wait for the message to arrive. And uh, uh, it's removed in the happy path, of course, in the unhappy path, we still have to wait to make sure that uh, the uh, message didn't arrive. So it's uh, not easy, uh, not possible to solve it all the time, uh, but uh, it is possible to design our test in a way that uh, uh, work around that. Uh, let's see uh, another uh, very strong form of connaissance. Uh, uh, let's uh, see if uh, uh, this example, we have a global counter and uh, uh, basically it has been implemented in a singleton pattern or anti-pattern. I don't want to go, I don't want to open that uh, uh, crazy discussion. Uh, however, uh, in this example, it is a single tone, and basically, uh, once this, this global counter is passed in the controller, it basically works correctly only if uh, uh, the correct instance of this uh, counter is passed. That's why they implement is a single tone. It's not a very good idea because this is connaissance of identity, right? And uh, it's uh, uh, basically. It happens when one or more components must reference exactly one particular instance of another entity to work. So we are coupling here with an instance and uh, it's uh, very strong. It's the strongest form of uh, uh, dynamic connaissance that uh, we find in our code. There is another one later that we introduced. But uh, how can we fix this form of connaissance? Well, it's not uh, very easy usually to fix this form of connection. It's a matter of redesign the system. For example, in that case of the global counter, we should really use a external uh, system. Maybe we can have a, a bus and send messages and have a component that consume messages in order to find the uh, counter. And that uh, will be uh, uh, something that solved this problem uh, and dissolved this problem, redesigning the system. Uh, let's see now. Uh, uh, one second, I need to go back. Uh, okay, let's see now uh, another form of connection. Now, uh, here the transition of my slides uh, are a little bit uh, hiding the message. Uh, behind uh, this crazy uh, puppet there is uh, works in my machine and this is a story uh, about uh, another form of connaissance that we identified which is uh, in our opinion uh, more uh, problematic that uh, connaissance of identity and uh, we call it connaissance of manual task uh, basically in one team uh, a couple of years ago I uh, implemented a new message uh, for our system. We needed to uh, raise and consume a new message type uh, for uh, for a system, uh, uh, for a distributed system. And so uh, it uh, it was uh, working fine in my machine. But when we put the code in the continuous integration environment, it uh, it bombs. It blew up the integration environment. And so. We were really puzzled because I was like, why, why the integration environment uh, don't work? It's everything is fine. The test environment works. So it's, uh, it doesn't make sense to me. Uh, and for no one in the team, it makes sense. And so the uh, most experienced uh, man in the team, he was here for many years, was like, well, let's, uh, let's look into it. So digging into it, he basically had to open the building script and that's where he realized he was like, ah yes we need to change every time we have a new message we need to add a setup in our building script and so basically there i was like no way right they were able to couple themselves to a manual test to do in the building script so every time they wanted to uh, use a new message type. They had to actually add a step in the building process. Imagine if you do that uh, uh, every day. It's uh, it's something that you don't want to do, 
right? And this is uh, in our book, we call it Conditions of Manual Task, which happen uh, when expounding the functionality requires some tasks to be executed outside the code base. So they are manual in our point of view. This is the strongest form of connaissance for us because it uh, is basically going against all what we do. We are essentially automate uh, things. We are automate manual things for our customer, for our uh, other department of the company. We try to make the life easier in order to automate the tedious uh, repetitive tasks and so we need to do it for ourselves in the first place so add enough manual tasks and teams will spend more time trying to make things work fidgeting with scripts and configuration than actually focusing on writing well-designed code this is a quote from our book so uh, the conclusion well it's all about the design as my uh, co-author pedro santos says and uh, uh, you know claude shannon said uh, uh, we know the past but cannot control it uh, we control the future but cannot know it and uh, i love this sentence from uh, claude shannon uh, but i think that in software development uh, uh, it's not completely true in software development we can control also the past it's called refactoring and a uh, good design allows for more effective and more frequent refactoring while if we have a bad design it's gonna be harder to refactor it's gonna be uh, less effective and we will find in a position to do it less and less often and this is gonna create uh, uh, problems in the wrong in the long term so for the past we have a lot of uh, metrics and analytics right? we have couple and cohesion we have connaissance now we have design and code smells and for the future we need guidance we principles we have solid principles we have object calisthenics we have four elements of simple design these are all things that uh, we explain in our book and uh, how does it work well uh, if we look at this class this is the last piece of code right let's see we have an order flow that have uh, an execute method that takes a long list of integers right and they generate an order id and they process the order and then it process the invoice right here we have a Connections of position in this method, right? Which is a long parameter code smell. Then there's no single responsibility, right? Solid principle here is broken because this class says that uh, it's an order flow, but it generates an order ID. So it's, uh, it's uh, two responsibilities at least. So it has a low cohesion. So it's uh, using a lot of primitive obsession and there is data coupling in all these uh, integer passed around as parameters if we see the second part of the class now we fix connaissance opposition using connaissance of name and type right in this way and fixing connaissance of position fix like magic all the other problems here right we fix the parameters list the code smells we fix solid principle we fix we fix uh, coupling and cohesion so why it is that well because everything is connected connaissance influence cohesion which influence coupling which influence connaissance it's basically all the same thing these are just concepts that allows us to understand problems with our system because it has high entropy if we consider entropy as the degree of disorder in a system we can postulate that connaissance coupling cohesion are goods for entropy and the goal to have an effective system is to minimize it so here i close why should we learn connaissance because uh, continuous attention 
to technical excellence and good design enhances agility. What is this? This is the ninth agile principle, which has been unfortunately forgotten a lot. So learn the rule like a pro so you can break them like an artist. Thank you. Uh, for, the, for, for this event, I set up a special 50% discount on our book. So if you do a screenshot here, you can go on Limpub uh, with that uh, link and uh, you can get uh, our book at 50% 50, 50 discount just for CodeFest. Thank you.